loved it. Really? Yeah, he got it. It's got it in morning truly this is the day that the Lord has made the Bible says we are to rejoice and be glad in it David said it like this I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord and so on this Sunday we're grateful to be back in God's presence to lift him up to give him glory and to just say Lord we thank you for all you've done for us and so we're going to invoke the presence of the Lord as we pray unto our God. Father, we thank you for being good. We thank you for being great. God, we thank you because you are merciful. God, we thank you because you're worthy of every praise that we have. Father, we ask you, God, to have your way in this service, God. Father, we ask you, God, to just move, deliver, and set free. Father, bless those who are in this place. Bless those who are on their way and bless those who are watching us virtually. And God, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray we say amen and praise God. And so for those of you who viewing us online, we ask you to clap, sing with us, even in the virtual space, as we are led in service by our minister of music, Minister Sean St. Jordan.
He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. That is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. You can be seated in his presence.
The song says, what are we saying yes to? Yes to your will, not my will, but your will. Not only your will, your way. So no matter how you tell me or where you tell me to go, I'm going to go that way. It may be uncomfortable, but I'm going to go that way. opportunity to talk to our God, the one whom we've said yes to. Yes. And while we're considering this opportunity, knowing that indeed it is a privilege yes, Lord. Thank you. to talk to a holy God, knowing that we are a sinful people, and he still allows us to come before his holy presence. I want you to take into consideration a few names, even as we are preparing to go before the throne. Please continue to pray for my colleague, Zewuze left Zekpo as he continues to uh, deal with the changes with losing his father. I did have an opportunity to talk with him uh, over this past week, and he says it's, in, it's been hard. It's been real hard. He has a need a routine just constantly talking to his dad and not having that. Now there's a major adjustment, so please uh, just pray for the lad Zekpo family. Then also pray for uh, healing, Sister Stewart. I uh, talked with her as well. Uh, pray for Sister Mary Hammond. Uh, continue to pray for Encouragement Temple members that are still dealing with illnesses. Sister Valerie, I spoke with her as well uh, this past week, and she is actually preparing to go undergo a surgery, and so on the 24th. So if you would please pray for her, that all will be well as she prepares for this procedure. Then pray for Sister Fifi. I believe is is it this week or maybe next week that she's going to be traveling. Uh, well, she shared with us that she'll be uh, doing some traveling, and so we just ask that you would pray for her. She supports Encouragement Temple that uh, as she's celebrating her, her her birthday and all of that, that you would uh, pray that she would be safe as she goes and as she comes back. Uh, then also, again, pray for uh, the Encouragement Temple family, Sister Wilson and uh, Brother Reggie and uh, his, his uh, family. Just continue to pray uh, for Latrice. Uh, just everyone that you don't see that you would normally see here, just pray for them uh, because life happens and sometimes we just like to retreat a little bit, just kind of take a step back to get ourselves together. But we also need to be mindful that the church is the hospital and this is where we are or should be able to be encouraged, lifted up, and even have someone there to help bear the burden with you, knowing that you're not on your own or by yourself. For those of you that are joining us virtually, won't you share with us your prayer requests and your praise reports so that uh, we can celebrate and also pray with you throughout the week. Let us pray together. Lord God, how we thank you. We love you. Father, we adore you. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Father, we thank you that you sit upon high. Your throne is in heaven and earth is your footstool. We thank you that you have not lost any power, that you are great, you are matchless, you are marvelous, you are wonderful, and everything you do is good. Father, we thank you that you don't make mistakes, and you are perfect in all your ways. You are an omniscient God, an omnipotent God, an omnipresent God. You are Jehovah Jireh, you are Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shalom. You are everything we need. You are the great I am. So whatever we need, oh God, we know that we have it in you because we are connected to you, the Holy One, the precious Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Father, we thank you that in the midst of chaos and turbulence, oh God, that we can look unto the hills from which cometh our help, knowing that all our help comes from you. Father, we thank you that there is no good thing that you will withhold from those that walk uprightly before you. Father, I'm just praying back your word. Father, I thank you. Because you answer according to your word, oh God. So we thank you that uh, anything that we need of, oh God, that your hand will continue to provide. Great is your faithfulness. We thank you, Father, that you are the great God. That there's no one that stands beside you. That there's no one that is above you, Father. That you have an aerial view of all of our situation, our circumstances, our failures, our setbacks, our flaws, our struggles, our burdens, oh God. We thank you that you see all, that you know all. Father, and before we ask for anything, we just want to just say thank you. 
thank you for another chance to say yes, Father, where there's clearly someone that has been uh, plastered and posted their, their new situation has been on the news where they have been taken because of life situations because of the carelessness of this world, oh God. We thank you that we have another chance to say yes. We thank you that we have another chance, oh God, to open up our eyes and see the beauty of the day that you've created, the way that you painted, painted the skies, oh God. We thank you that we're able to see it and feel the wind to kiss our face and the sun to shine upon us. Father, we say thank you. We often take these things for granted, but somebody's in a hospital bedroom right now and they wish they could go outside and hear the birds and see the wonderful forest in the trees. They wish they could experience the warmth of the sun. They wish, oh God, that they could connect with loved ones. They wish, oh God, there's someone in jail cells that all they see is four concrete walls. Father, they wish they can go outside and experience your grandeur of all you created. So, Father, we don't take it for granted. We say Father, we know that although everything may not be the way that we would like it to be, Father, we know that everything is not as bad as it could be. Father, we clearly could be without so much more. But you have still been faithful to us when we have not been faithful to you. When we doubted you, when we doubted your way, oh God, for our lives, when we did not trust that you had our best interest at heart. Even the believer doubted you, Father. But we are thankful, Father, that you, even with our doubt, it does not alter your character. That you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Father, we thank you that you are a consistent God. That you are not fickle and finite. We thank you that you don't throw temper tantrums when we act out of character. Father, we thank you that you still love us. And even when we make mistakes, you don't laugh at us. Father, we thank you. That your love is great and it grows wide and deep and that nothing shall ever separate us from the love of God that is found in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you that while we were yet sinners, you chose to die for us. We thank you that you always have our best interests at heart. We thank you that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. So, Father, right now, we just thank you that you love us so much, even when we don't love ourselves. When we listen to the voices of others that say that we're not good enough, we're not qualified, we're not pretty enough, we're not small enough. We don't or didn't grow up on, on the right side of the tracks. Yes. Father, we thank you that you remind us that you love us. And someone needs to know that, that when no one else will say, I love you, that you love us. Father, right now, I know that indeed as we're thanking you for everything and trusting you with our very lives because in you we live, move, and have our being. The reality is that someone, while they may know and have heard that Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Sometimes it feels like we're left alone. Father, so right now, I pray that you encourage the heart of those that are discouraged, whether they're in person with us right now or viewing us virtually, Father, would you encourage the disencouraged? That they will be reminded that this walk is not all about flowers and roses. But you have said in your word that in this life we will have trials and tribulations. But we can be of good courage because you have already overcome the world. Father, but in this moment, won't you be with them? Wipe the tears from their eyes. Encourage their hearts that it would not be overfilled with frustration and the thoughts that there is no other way. Won't you send, oh God, someone there to encourage them? Maybe while they're in the store, someone will stop them and say, Jesus really loves you. I just wanted you to know that. Father, will you allow someone to text them today saying that they care about them? Just give them some hope, oh God, where they feel like it would be better that they would just take their life. Remind them that their life is worth living because you have a plan for them. And we are encouraged in, our, in your word, oh God, that you know the plans and thoughts that you have towards us. Plans to prosper us, 
not to harm us, to give us a future and an expected hope. Father, and our hope is in you. So, Father, won't you be with that person even that's in the hospital bedrooms, oh God, where the doctors have thrown up their hands and said there's nothing more that we can do. We've done all the research. We don't know what else to do. This is the end. Father, we thank you that you always, always have the last say. Father, whatever you've done in the past, you're able to do it again. That life that you have restored that was once on life support, we know that you're able to do it again. That person that was in a coma that the doctor said would never wake up, but you woke them up. We know that you can do it again. Father, that person that's dealing with dialysis and diabetes and high blood pressure and high cholesterol, oh God. COVID-19, cancer, oh God. MS, oh God. That person that's dealing with Alzheimer's, oh God. You are able to restore the body, the bone, the mind, oh God, the emotions, oh God, that are healthy. Father, we know that you can do it, so do it again. Encore, God. Yes. Father, that person that is dealing with bipolar and schizophrenia, won't you make those ways that are crooked straight? That they will only heed your voice, listen to your voice. That the evil one will not trap them in their minds. Jesus. That they will realize and know that you have the last say. Yes. And you are the ultimate authority. So Father, help them to be sensitive to your voice. And not just be sensitive to it, help them to listen and act upon your voice. Fill them with your Holy Spirit today, oh God. That person that is struggling with a decision that needs to be made. Father, won't you grant them wisdom? Wisdom to know when to move, when to stand still, when to go left or right, when to speak up or be silent. Father, because the reality is that sometimes we mess up things because we talk too much. Because we want to do things our way. But even as Jesus has said, oh God, not our will, but thy will be done. Father, we pray that you will restore families today. Because I've, I've seen, I can tell if I've seen on the news just over these last seven days about how spouses are just going at it. Husbands are killing wives and wives are killing husbands and parents are killing children and children are killing their parents. Father, won't you restore Amen. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, we need you and even in these perilous times that we are living in. Father, help us, oh God, to keep our eyes on you. would not fall for any and every wind of doctrine, God, that tickles our fancy, Father, but that we would trust your word. Even as we go, Father, that we would be like the deer that pass from the rivers and streams of water, that our soul would truly desire you and your word, God. Yes, God. That we would not, oh God, be tricked by the enemy. Because he is cunning and crafty. Your word reminds us that he roams around like a lion. Seeking whom he can devour. Who can he destroy? Your word tells us that he has come none other but to steal, kill, and destroy. But you alone come. That we may have life and have it more abundantly. So Father, help us to seek that abundant life. That abundant life. That, that freshness that you have, oh God, for us. Father, we thank you even right now that you're hearing us and anything, oh God, that I may have neglected, oh God, to place at your feet. Father, we thank you that you know everything and you're working everything out for our good and for your glory. So get the glory out of our lives. Whatever it is that's in us that you need to take out, take it out, oh God. Convict us, correct us, and reestablish us in you that we will be like that light that is set upon our heel. Father, we thank you. 
And we pray even right now that you would be with Pastor Reed, that he would open up his mouth and preach the uncompromising word of God. Father, that those of you virtually or in person, that they would not view it with judgmental eyes or spectating hearts, but they will simply be available to hear what thus says the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. That he will speak with power and authority. And whatever Pastor Reed is lacking, oh God, we thank you and trust that you will pick up the slack. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. And we thank you for the forgiveness of sin, even right now, Father. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask God. We thank you that you've heard us and you always hear us. Every time we pray. It's in that perfect name that we bless your name. Amen.
you need the Lord at this moment. The song says, I need you to fill the room. What room? That empty room that's inside of me. God, I need you to fill it. That room from the void that I've been having for years. Lord, I need you to fill it. I don't know about you, but I'm in need of a miracle of God this morning. I know he woke us up this morning. I know that we are clothed and we are in our right mind. But if the truth is to be told, we need the Lord to continue to perform miracles in our lives. Boy, y'all, y'all know the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen
Y'all will be reading. I know I normally read from the New King James Version, but on this Sunday, I'm going to read from the New International Version. Yes, all right. The word of the Lord reads as follows. On the 14th night, we were still being driven across the Adriatic Sea. When about midnight, the sailors sensed that they were approaching land. They took surroundings and found that the water was 120 feet deep. A short time later, they took surroundings again and found it was 90 feet deep. Fearing that we would be dashed against the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. In an attempt to escape from the ship, the sailors let the lifeboat down into the sea, pretending they were going to lower some anchors from the boat. Then Paul said to Centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut the ropes that were held the lifeboats and let it drift away. Just before dawn, Paul urged them all to eat. He says, for the last 14 days, you have been in constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't eaten anything. Now, I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from your head. After he said this, he took bread and gave thanks to God in front of them all. Then he began to break it and began to eat. Mm -hmm. They were all encouraged and ate some food themselves. The 43rd and 44th verse. But the satyrian wanted to spare Paul's life and kept them from carrying out their plans. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. The rest were to get there on planks or on other pieces of ship. Mm -hmm. In this way, Everyone reached land safely. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers of his word. You all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For the for these few moments, we like to preach on the topic. I gotta keep it moving. Amen. For the proper folks, I have to keep moving. Got to keep moving. Get in the 20, chapter 27, we're informed that Paul was on his way to Italy to see Caesar. It's time Paul was scheduled to meet him in order for his life, hit the fate of his life to be at hand. We're informed that as they began to travel by sea, that a storm arises. As the storm arises, Paul informed the captain of the ship that they should not continue to stay at sea. Is that like some of us when life begins to get hard and we begin to not even get hard but we see trouble on the horizon. Somebody might tell you you know what I don't think you should go left. I think you should go right but because that person is not who you think they are which means they are not suitable because you have to understand the context of the text. Paul tells the captain to don't go into the sea, but the captain listens to the owner of the ship and the dignified people, and he decides to go. Paul, being a prisoner, he did not want to listen to him. We got to be careful who we decide who we are going to listen to All right. and who we don't listen to because of something that they have behind their name. Just because the person have all the degrees and everything in the world doesn't mean they have a spiritual awareness of what we should do just because a person may have records or may not have the education doesn't mean that they're not in tune with God. The reality is that individual may be more in tune with God than the person that's been to school, that's been to seminary. But us as humans, we rather take the advice of somebody that have letters and credentials behind their name. And so they did listen to Paul and they decide to go to continue to keep moving. And the Bible tells us that as they continue that the storm arises. But because of the sailor, he believed since the storm was not as bad that he could navigate it on his own. Right. 
Don't that sound like some of y'all? Some of us? When the trial is not that bad, I know who to call. I can handle it all by myself. I know what to do is just a little light work. I can take care of this on my own. But the Bible tells us in chapter 27 that as they continue that the storm got worse. The Bible said the storm got so bad that the captain of the ship could not control the ship because the storm was so powerful and it got to a place that he had to let the will of the ship go. All right. and that's just how life gets sometimes where it gets so hard that we can't control it and sometimes we just want to let it go. But the reality is we let it go when it's gotten too far. But what I love is that that is not how the story ends in this instance. The Bible says that as they continue to move, as they continue to travel, the Bible tells us that on this ship, everybody that was on this ship believed that life was about to come to an end. And in verse 20, the Bible says that they all had lost hope that their situation can change. And I believe that we've all been on that road before where we lost all hope that our trials and that our storm would stop. Um, if you haven't, just keep living. Some of us have been through some situations for long enough and you say, Lord, how long? Lord, I just don't believe it's going to get better for me. Lord, I'm ready to throw in the towel. Lord, you can take my life. I've lost all hope. If you haven't lost all hope once or twice in your life, then you have a better track record than the greatest apostle that we have by the name of Paul. We have a better track record by the, by the individual who died for our souls by the name of Jesus. Because the reality is they've gotten to places where they begin to lose hope. Why? Jesus said, Lord, if you could remove this cup for me. The reality is we don't want to deal with the trial. We want to just stop moving. Living for God is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Living this Christian life is horrible. Oh my life. I could have gotten better in the streets all by myself. That's how we feel. All hope is lost. But I thank God that even though sometimes in our flesh we feel that all hope it's lost. I thank God in my spirit. I just know all hope is not lost. How you know? Because hope is not based on what we see with our naked eyes. No, our hope is our expectation. Is what we believe. And we believe God is able to do anything but fail. As we continue to navigate through life, even though you want to throw in a towel, you want to give up, I would encourage you, implore you that you have to keep moving, that you have to keep going. And the text gives us three nuggets to why we are able to keep going. And the first thing that we read is in the text is that we need to be able to endure the storms that will arise. We need to be able to endure these storms that will arise. Watch this. These sailors was in a storm as well. You got to understand that these sailors was there. These was professional, professional sailors. This is what they did for a living. The Bible says that even the storm had got so bad that they were ready to get off of this boat. Have y'all been in the storm so long that, Lord, you're ready to get off this boat? But in order to avoid devastation, these sailors were ready to sneak off and go. Now, the truth of the matter is, none of us like storms. None of us like uncomfortable seasons in our lives. None of us like when all hell breaks loose. Because what it does is it disrupts our peace. It disrupts our movement. It disrupts our, uh, our, our, our routine. It disrupts everything about us. These sailors was in, in a place where everything that they done was disrupted. Their schedule was disrupted. Their routine was off. And they didn't know how to navigate. And the Bible tells us that they were ready to jump ship now. The thing that occurred to me that makes this compelling is that these sailors are the reasons why that they're 
there in sea and in the storm in the first place. And now the ones who's responsible for you being in this situation are the ones that's ready to jump ship. But just like people, y'all seen it, we've all seen it where people are responsible for the hardships only to leave it and let you deal with the ramifications. You brought this house with a husband, but because he didn't want to do his part, he leaves and leaves you with all the responsibility. We had these kids together, but all of a sudden now, you want to leave and leave all the burden on me. People, you have caused a situation, but you want to jump shit. I didn't make this by myself. I didn't do this by myself. But what I thank God is that even though some people leave, God gives some of us the strength to continue to hold on. He'll give you the strength to continue to move. He'll give you the strength to deal with the trials that's laid before us. These people put their trust in sailors and the sailors was ready to jump ship. We need to be careful who we put our trust in. I trust that we're going to stay together forever. I trust that you're going to manage. I trust that this is going to happen. I trust your decision. And in trusting people, sometimes they can lay, let you down. That's when I thank God for the word of the Lord. The Bible says, bless those who trust in the Lord. We should get to a place. I trust no man. Yes, I'm going to listen to you. But at the end of the day, I'm going to go to God. And I'm going to ask. With a situation, don't trust that your money is going to keep it together because you may lose that job next week. Don't trust that your intuition will get it done because some people lose their mind. But trust that the Lord will see you through. Amen. Yes, he will. What I love is that even though these individuals wanted to jump ship, there was somebody there to talk them, um, talk them off the ledge. There was somebody there to talk some sense to them. The Bible says, Paul, and I believe being led by the Spirit of God, tells these soldiers that if these sailors jump off ship, then you will not survive. Now, when I read that, two things came to mind, because the Bible says, after Paul told them that, that the soldiers cut the ropes of the lifeboat. Meaning that by them cutting the ropes from the lifeboat, the sailors couldn't go anywhere. And in understanding that, two things to me came to my spirit when I was reading this last night. The first thing that came to my spirit is that sometimes when going through trials and tribulations, the Lord will cut off your lifeboat for you to only trust in him. God will cut your life boats loose for you to trust in him. You know when you go through trials and times get hard, you always got a phone call and that person comes through. When the Lord will make it that you can call that person 10 and 20 times, they won't answer. The Lord will have it that they, if they do answer, they don't have it. The Lord will cut all your lifelines so you can be that 
if these sailors, oh, y'all missed it. If these sailors jump off, then you will die. Come on, over your head. Let me say it again. Soldiers took pride of getting out tough times by themselves. But Paul had to tell the soldiers that if these sailors jump ship, then you will die, signifying that you can't make it all by yourself. You think you're powerful enough to make it by yourself. No, you need somebody sometimes. What do you mean you need somebody sometimes? When you're discouraged, you need somebody to tell you it's going to be all right. When you're going through a hardship, you need to talk to somebody who been through the same thing with you that would tell you, baby, God is not a respected person. If he brought me out of this divorce, if he brought me out of this miscarriage, if he brought me from being unemployed, if he brought me from all of my mind, if he did it for you, if he did it for me, he can do it for you. You all need somebody. Sometimes. Because in going through hardships, you will go through moments where you can't encourage yourself in the Lord. That's right, that's real. You're going to go through moments where you don't want to pray. You're going to go through moments. Matter of fact, y'all see it in the building today. You go through moments where you don't want to come to church. You go through moments where you just want to be left alone. That's real. That's when you need somebody to come by and knock on your door. So it's not checking on you. That's when you need that text message to come through. That's when you need somebody to tap you on your shoulder saying, hold on, just a little while longer. Everything is going to be all right. You need somebody. Sometimes. Amen. Now we got to keep going and we going to keep going. You got to endure the storms that will arise. But secondly, you got to get strength to continue the journey. You got to get strength to continue the journey. Watch this, watch this. Paul knew, he understood what was ahead of them. And what Paul does, he tells the people, y'all need to put something in your body. But what I love, Paul says, y'all haven't eaten in 14 days. Now, what, what the thing of it is, if they were fasting, that was one thing. But Paul was letting them know, y'all haven't eaten in 14 days because of suspense. And what Paul was saying, y'all haven't eaten because you were scared and you allowed this trial to take everything that you wow. need to do away from you. And sometimes we allow our trials to take away the thing that we need to do that we need the most to be able to make it through. He says, y'all been doing this before. You've been doing this too long. You can't be scared forever. They were suspicious. They were scared because they had never seen it before. Matter of fact, it got so bad, they named this storm Eroclodon. And that's what we do when the storm get heavy, we give it a name. What do you mean? Oh, man, what you going through, man? I'm going through this blankety blank blank. We give it names, and sometimes the names ain't godly, but we give it a name to let you know just how frustrated we are with the situation. Paul says, y'all know y'all do that, y'all. Y'all know we do it. Paul says, okay, y'all haven't eaten. 14 days. You've been scared for too long. You've been away from the house of God too long. You've been away from the word of God too long. You haven't implied or implored or dug into the word of God. He said, you need to eat something. And for the child of God, for those of us who call ourselves Christians, the last, the first thing we need to do when going through hardship is we need to eat the word of God. You need to read the Bible where it says you're more than a conqueror. You need to read the Bible where it says that the Lord will never leave me nor forsake me. We need to read the word that says I am more than a conqueror. We need to read the word of the Lord that lets us know that nothing shall be called impossible with him. We shall read the, we need to read the word where it says they know I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall feel no evil. Why? Because your rod and staff, they comfort me. So, watch this, watch this. Because you can not eat all you want. 
away all you want. The reality is, until God says, deliver them, you won't be delivered. But you won't be strong enough to be able to endure unless you put something in you. That's just like us naturally. Let's talk about us naturally, naturally. One time, one time, I woke up early from a while ago. I don't wake up early to cut the grass no more. But one time, I woke up early and I cut the grass. Didn't have no breakfast. Y'all pray for me. Didn't have no breakfast. It was a long while ago. You see my wife frowning because it's been a while since I woke up early cut the grass. I do when I get out of work now. But I got up, drunk my coffee, went out there, cut the grass. And I thought, I remember what it was. It's when I had the surgery. And, 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 and I, I was struggling. I was struggling to cut the grass because normally it's easy for me to go. See, over there talking about me, y'all pray for it. It was easy for me to cut the grass. But this particular time, I felt weak, but I had no food in my system. I felt weak because this is something that I've always done. It was always easy. But at this particular time, I was weak because I didn't have what I needed inside of me to be able to push through. So, but the next time that I cut the grass, I made sure I put not only coffee in my system, but I made sure I put some food in my system. So then when it was time for me to cut the grass, what took me two hours last time only took me 40 minutes this time. That's Edge and Amber. What she said, sometimes when it's something too long, it's because we don't eat, because we don't have a word, because we're not in tune. Sometimes that's why we are in our situations that long. All right, all right, all right. But this is for the bless y'all. If I continue to dig into the word, if I continue to eat the word of God, then my situation won't be as hard and as long because I have a spiritual understanding of how this thing should be. Yeah, yeah. Watch this, watch this, watch this. And so, and so, he says, he says, you need to eat the word of God. So, 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 when, when it looks like God is not there, you need to say, he's Jehovah Roy. When, when, when I don't have anything, you need to call them Jehovah. Jehovah Roh, I mean God sees. When it seems like I don't have all I need, you need to say Jehovah Jireh. My God is my provider. When you're going through and you got all kind of references, you need to say Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is my peace. And the more you speak the word to your trials and tribulations, the more that thing have to be that thing. Yeah. That how you know? But go to Matthew chapter 4, the Bible says. That after Jesus had left the mountain of the, the desert for being tempted, the Bible said that the devil came at him. And the devil began to talk crazy and sideways to him to make him to try to fall. But what I love in the Bible, the Bible says that every time the enemy tried to say something to him, that Jesus gave him the word of God. And after you give that enemy the word of God enough, then the Bible said that he departed for a season. He won't depart from you if you don't tell the word of God. He won't leave you if you don't give him scriptures. But if you give him scriptures, he will depart for a season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A season. For a season. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. But what I love, yeah. Paul confident so much in the Lord, he says this to him. He says this, that, that if y'all do what I tell you to do, you're going to go through the storm. He says this, but what he says is that even though you're going to go through the storm, uh -huh. that a hell won't even come off your head. Meaning that it may affect the things around you, but the storms and the trial won't affect you physically. And I don't know who I'm talking to. You allow them things to go. Allow material things to flee. As long as the Lord keep you and sustain you day by day, you got enough when you wake up and say, Lord, I thank you for bread. Lord, I thank you for a roof. Lord, I thank you for providing all my daily need according to your riches and glory, which is in Christ Jesus. After this, Paul didn't just tell them. But Paul partook in it with them. Because what Paul was showing them is that I'm, not only am I in this with y'all, but I'm also a prisoner. And so Paul was saying to you, some of y'all are just going through this storm. I'm going through this storm while I'm in chains. What I love about Paul is Paul didn't allow the mess that he was in to stop him from encouraging other people. Mm. Let me, oh, let me say that again. Paul didn't allow an 
everything that he was going through mm -hmm. to stop him from encouraging other people. Yes, These soldiers was the ones who had Paul arrested. They the ones that had him in chains. And instead of him saying, God, get him, because they talked about me. God, let me let him hit in their face, Lord. Tell them to leave me alone. No, the Bible says that Paul tells them, look, what y'all doing is not right. How many of us are willing to pray for people that y'all know they talking about us? I'm still waiting for hands. Mine is halfway up. I'm still waiting on it. Because human nature says, okay, if you do me wrong, then so be it. I trust God. Says I trust God. I'm going to lean on trust God. And if you don't trust him, I don't care what happens to you. But Paul says, y'all need to eat. But the Bible says, not only does he tell them, Paul uses, the Bible says, that he takes the bread. He breaks. Not only does he break, but he blesses God and he gives it to them. Mm. Paul was willing to, to pour out what he had for everybody, for those who were chained, for those that had him chained, for those who were scared, for those who were saved, for those who were not saved. But we only want to help people that look like us, that smell like us, that save like us, that breathe like us. But the reality is, if God is no respect of person, then we should be no respect of person. And the Bible says, the Bible says, that those 276 men on the boat, after they heard the word from Paul, the Bible says they were encouraged. It's right there in your Bible, verse 36. The Bible says after Paul was finished, the Bible says that they ate and they were encouraged. Because the reality is, if we can encourage one another, we can have a better system. We can have a better flow. We can have a better fellowship. Why? Because if we all speak in the same language, we all believe in the same God, we all lift them up, then we all can come together and say, Sister, I see the Lord's glow in your body. I see him glowing in you too, knowing that your life is a hot mess. <laughs> we gonna keep moving, y'all. If we gonna keep moving, we got to endure the storms. Not only should we endure the storm, but we need to find strength to continue on this journey. But finally, you need to embrace your survival. Yes, sir. Hmm. Let me say it again. You need to embrace your survival. All right. Make it clear. The Bible says in verse 39, before I get to 40, the Bible says in verse 39, that even though they were going through trials and tribulations, the Bible says that they didn't recognize this place. Oh, this is going to bless y'all. But they saw dry land. Let me say that again. The Bible says, verse 39, you can read your Bibles, that, I say continue, they didn't recognize this place. Yes, sir. But they saw dry land. They didn't understand or know how they got to this place. But they saw deliverance afar off. And sometimes we may not understand the method of how God brings us out. Sometimes we may not understand the ways that he brings us out. We might not understand why he uses this person to bring us out. But the reality is that God will allow some things that, stop, that we may not even see coming to bring us out. Your deliverance sometimes might come from somebody you've never talked to in your life. Sometimes the word of advice that you need may come from a crackhead. And if he delivers us in a way that we didn't see coming, and it's the Lord's, so be it. You're delivered nonetheless. And so we're going to stop wait, waiting for that person you called to call you back. Stop waiting on your mama to come through. Stop waiting for your boy or your man to come through. That deliverance may not come from them. Yeah. Yeah. Bible says, the Bible says that they saw land. But the, is, but the ship didn't make it to land. And so you know, the Bible says that as they was approaching, that the ship destroyed. That the ship, it was shipwrecked. That was, that was wrong way I said it. It was shipwrecked. And that's how.
how life does sometimes. You can see hope only for something else wrong to happen. I see daylight, but now I got to deal with this before I get there. God, I, I just started to save five dollars, and now this cell phone bill is, is five dollars more than I expected. Lord, I got enough to pay the light bill because it's only been one fifty. Now my light bill is two eighty five. Lord, really? Come on, come on. Thought you might have something to say. Yeah. I seen it fall off, but before we got there, something happened. Yeah, yeah. And what it does to us, it shakes. Because we see the end. We can taste the end. But all of a sudden, something comes to block that deliverance. And it makes you say, ain't this some stuff? Yeah, y'all say that now. That ain't what you say when you leave here. But what I love in the text is that even though the ship was wrecked, our hope still wasn't lost. And to those who are dealing with shipwreck right now, our hope is still not lost. And so Paul says, it's in Acts, he says to some of y'all, all right, there's a land. Don't stop right now because this ship has been destroyed. There's the land. Don't stop right now because you got an unwanted phone call. Don't stop right now because things are not the way you want it to be. Don't stop right now. And that's a word I don't know who I'm talking to. Don't stop right now because you saw the end only to be pushed back five more centimeters. Don't stop right now because you had the interview but they didn't give you the job. Don't stop right now because you had the meeting and they didn't go and play. Break it down. 
ship. Yes, sir. Meaning that before it went shipwreck, All right. some people had clothes. Before the shipwreck, some people had money. Before the shipwreck, some people had jewelry. Before the shipwreck, some of us had houses. Some of us had good jobs. Some of us had good looking husband and wives. Some of us had it all. But the Bible lets me know that when the shipwreck happened, the people lost everything that they had on the ship, but their lives were saved. Which tells me that it doesn't matter if you lose it all. As long as you haven't lost your hope and your trust in the Lord, material things will come back. And, 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 and,
and she began to hold this conversation. Y'all, if you brought her neck, I don't care. And, and as she talked, she knew my routine. So at the 7.45 break, I began to close my laptop. But as I closed my laptop, somebody reopens my laptop and asks me, what are you doing? Now, it's comical. But if I didn't have that push, yes, yes. not realizing that some assignments, I didn't make the grade that I thought I was going to make. Yeah. I would have failed it because of my attendance issues. But because she kept pushing me and she made sure that from that time on, I stayed there till 9 o'clock. I hated it, but at the end of the day, I, I received a B minus because she kept me there. Now, if she wouldn't have kept me there, I would have failed the class. What are you saying? Sometimes God will have them people in your life to make sure you pass your trial. You'll make it through. Just like Paul said, you needed the sailors, soldiers. We need people that will keep us in line. I know that's comical, but it's real application. And finally, embrace your survival. You may have some scars on this journey. You may have some emotional damages on this journey. You may have bills on this journey. You may have people calling you to have stuff in collections on this journey. You may have to deal with the person that dealt you wrong on this journey. But embrace your survival because what people thought was going to break you and destroy you only made you stronger. And the only way you get stronger is you got to understand is that I'm making it this far by faith and it's not because of who I am. It's not because of what I know, but it's because of whose I am. And if we understand that, we'll be able to continue to push through any trial and tribulation you go through with the Lord on your side. So my words to everybody, keep going. Keep pushing. Yeah. Even when you want to throw in the towel. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Keep pushing. Even when it feels like you're taking enough blows. <laughs> keep going. Keep pushing. Because sooner or later, your deliverance will be there. Yeah. Father, we come before you. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, because we do have storms in life. And God, sometimes things will get worse before they get better. But God, we know that even though it may get worse before it gets better, we know, God, that we can handle anything that comes our way because your word say you'll never leave us nor forsake us. So we know that we'll that you're walking with us. So Father God, I ask you to encourage those who are at the brink of no return. Let something be said today, God, to give them that extra push to continue to make it through the trials of life. Life is hard. But we're thankful that we have an advocate, a mediator that can ease the burden. You said, cast all our cares on you. Thank you Jesus. Help us to do that, God, that way we can continue to walk. Yes. God, give us the strength to endure the trying uncomfortable seasons of our life. And when those times get hard, Father, Give us the knowledge, God. Give us the wherewithal to lean and trust and to go to the word of God. That will sustain, that will build us up. That will strengthen us for the storm. And Father, give us the courage and the boldness to thank you for survival. And every day that we wake up, we survived. Every day that we wake up, Says that as long as there's life, there's hope. Yes. Hope that things will change. Hope with an expectancy that you will move. And we can keep fighting. We can keep going. And we can be a light to others.
strengthen our people right now. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray and say amen. Amen. And praise God. Amen. Maybe there's somebody here. Here is online that's at the brink of wanting to stop moving. If that you, I ask you to stand right where you are. Ask me to pray for strength.
comfortable, but classy. Amen. And so we want you to come on out and join us for Fifth Sunday as well. We have given opportunities that are available for you. The QR codes on the back wall for those of you that are here that would like to take advantage of that opportunity. For our virtual viewers, the information is in uh, the live feed. So please go ahead. You can always click there and give in that way. We thank God for all of our supporters that we've had over these last few years. You know, we have people from near and far that support Encouragement Tip, and we thank God for those. If you want to mail your contributions in, Please send in the P.O. Box 60621, Houston, Texas, 77205. For those of you that are a little old school, just want to put your contribution into the offering tray. Ethan is going to come around after I finish uh, praying over the offering. The Bible reminds us that the Lord asked for the tithe. Uh, for those of you that don't know what the tithe is, that's the first 10% of all of your increase. That's before you give uh, your taxes and all of that. And so um, I like to always say, you know, if you want God to give you a blessing that's really, really large, a gross blessing, that's what we call it, uh, then you need to do a gross offering. You can make sure you tithe off your gross. If you want a net blessing, then you tithe off your net. But anyway, we want you to do the first fruit. And that, so that means your gross. That means before anyone else receives anything, you make sure that the Lord gets his off the top. Because it means he is the one that has provided for you. Uh, we're going to pray over the offering uh, even right now. Lord God, we thank you for every good and perfect gift that belongs and comes from you. Father, we thank you that you lent to us our jobs and our resources uh, so that we can be able to take care of things even as we build up your kingdom here on earth. So, Father, we pray that whoever is giving on this day, that you will bless them according to your will, oh God, that they will uh, be restored, that they will not go lacking because they chose to partner with you and to give in obedience to both the tithe and even to give an offering. Father, we love you and we thank you uh, that you provide every one of our needs. Lord, we thank you that you have heard us even right now. And we pray that you restore it to us according to how you see fit. Give us a smile as we give. Even if it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. Ethan, go around and collect. Again, give according to your heart's desire. Give according to your heart's desire. Uh, we want to make sure that you smile. Don't be mad giving, looking ugly in the face when you give. But smile, be happy that you have uh, what you have, that God is able to allow for you to give. Uh, she does an initiative where she feeds the hungry. 
and so since she's ours, we're going to support her. Yes. And so um, those of you viewing online, be stay tuned. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you will have a flyer soon posted. But we are going to support her in those endeavors. Okay. And so uh, the location that they will be given as we continue to go, it will be on the flyer. So we will be out there at Curtis and Temple. That's a Saturday. On the calendar. Most of y'all, you're off on Saturday. Uh, and these members who, who, who decide to stay at home, let them know that we have an outreach issue. Um, I, I think I'm done ranting with people. But, you know, we talked about it today. If God has done something for you, give them your time. Give them your time. Y'all, that, that's it. Well, that's everybody in the stands. Pastor Chris looking at me saying, okay, enough is enough. You know you're right. Don't just do them any kind of way. Let's pray. God, we, we thank you, God. We thank you because we can keep moving with you. We thank you because, God, you've been better to us than what we deserve. And, God, we thank you for your spirit that allows us to move and continue to push day by day. Father, as we leave this place, God, we ask you to be with us as we travel over the highways. Father, keep us safe from accidents, Father. And God, we ask you, allow us to get to our homes and various destinations safe. And God, as we go throughout our week, Father, we ask you that you be with us, God. That you allow us to be a light. That we just can cleave and cling to your word, God. Because we know that we can keep moving. And we can keep pushing. Help us to be encouraged. And to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to the only wise God, be glory, honor, dominion, power. Until we meet again, we'll see y'all this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Until then, be encouraged, you are dismissed.